Okay, so today we're going to talk about RDS on AWS. Um, basically, a bunch of acronyms to allow you to run your database in the cloud, in Amazon's cloud. Um, so if you're not familiar with some of these things, um, just a quick uh, little blurb on this. So AWS, Amazon Web Services, um, basically a few years ago, Amazon figured out that they might know a thing or two about being able to deal with uh, high, uh, highly visited websites and so forth. Um, and so they basically uh, turned um, that part into, into another part of their business. Um, so you can actually rent Amazon's infrastructure to be able to use for um, for your own kinds of projects. Um, and so Amazon turns out to be one of the most popular um, and most widely used of the uh, of the cloud service providers. A few years back I was at a uh, I was at a conference, PHP conference and they, they were saying that um, at that time just the Amazon web services side of things for Amazon was over four billion dollars a year. Um, so you can see it's been very lucrative for them um, and rightly so they, they actually do a really really good job at these things. Um, anyway, so if, to get into your account, uh, you're going to want to go to aws.amazon.com. Uh, you can click my account and do all of that. This is assuming um, for my students that you've uh, already signed up for AWS Educate. Uh, that way you get uh, some of the, uh, the free goodies here. Once you log in, you'll get something that looks like this. Um, so this basically shows us all of the different services that, uh, that and, and the different categories for all the different services and so forth. And as you can see, there's a lot of stuff here. Amazon has, has and continues to grow their offerings um, in, the, uh, in the cloud side of things. So you can see there's just a, a ton of different uh, options here. Um, one of the things that I want to point out, you'll notice if you look up here, um, it says North California. Um, and, you know, as, as my students know, I'm not in North California. I'm in Florida with you. Um, the, the problem is that uh, due to some legacy issues, I've had my account so long, my default account of North Virginia, which is what you should be using if you're, if you're uh, setting this up from Florida, um, doesn't look like uh, what you'll see if you had signed up for an account recently. So I need to switch to uh, to one of these other um, one of those other regions so that uh, so that you can get a better idea. But again, generally you pick the region that is closest geographically to um, well either to you or to uh, to your clients. Okay. Um, so anyways, what we're going to use is we're going to use RDS. Okay, and that's it stands for you'll notice manage relational database service. Okay, all it means is that you can run something like MariaDB or MySQL or a number of other databases on a computer that is inside Amazon's um, inside Amazon's data center. Okay, some of the reasons for doing that. Well, it gives you opportunities, for instance, to make easy backups. You don't have to manage the server. Um, you know, all those kinds of things. So that's what we're going to look at today, right? So when you kind of come into here to look at the uh, RDS data uh, date dashboard, right? I'm going to click uh, Get Started Now um, to just launch the uh, the wizard for doing this, right? So the first thing it asks about is uh, is which database engine we want to use, right? So uh, there's MySQL, of course, MariaDB, which is what we've been using. Uh, you'll notice that Amazon has its own um, called Aurora. Um, basically, you know, that's for higher performance. We don't really need that. That's, that's more database than we need right now. Uh, we do have the options for Postgres and, uh, and Oracle and, and uh, SQL Server as well. So I'm going to select MariaDB, right? And notice it says it's free tier eligible, okay? So that's places, that's, that's ways to, you know, if you're an AWS Educate student, uh, I think you get something like $100 a year. Um, and so by, by using things like the free tier, uh, things that are within the free tier, that doesn't even count towards your $100 a year. So that $100 a year can really kind of stretch in terms of, uh, in terms of using Amazon services. Um, anyways, so yeah, I'm going to select MariaDB. And then it gives us, you know, okay, what's the purpose of this? So if we were deploying um, what we call a production system, right, a system where it is the backbone for some live system that, uh, that individuals are using, then we want a production system, right? But for our purposes, you know, a test system is fine. We don't have to use as many resources and so forth. That's the whole point behind that. So I'm going to go over here under Dev and Test and select that. Then I'll click Next. 
Okay, so next kind of gives us a bunch of these things. You notice you can even actually restrict it to only show you things that are in the uh, in the free tier. Um, and so again, you know, you can use that. You'll notice a lot of these a lot of these things you don't have options. You don't even have um, other options. Um, in terms of the database itself, we notice you we can actually switch back to a few older versions. I'm just going to keep it on this one, uh, the current version. Um, and then here it basically talks about uh, talks about the uh, the instance class. Okay, um, notice if I uncheck check that the instance class list is much much larger okay basically this is how much computer is going to run uh, is going to run your database right again in production types of environments yeah i'm probably going to want to use some of these larger things and so forth but for what for our purposes we can use the uh, the the smallest one the one that is available under the uh, under the free tier right so we do that um multi az deployment notice it doesn't even bother asking me for that if, if yours is does allow you again select no for for our purposes we don't need copies of this uh this database um around so a db instance identifier you can just give it some name um basically that that you'll only see in your own list for for identifying um essentially the host the computer that's running it um you know, so i'll just call it something like uh, my rds inst um, and technically you could actually use the same thing if you wanted to master username basically the user uh the the username that you'll use for uh for logging into uh into your database so you can call this whatever um you know i can call it uh, i'll just use my first name um password of course uh make sure you uh you pay attention to uh pay attention with this and of course confirm it all right so that's the password you're going to use for logging into uh into the server all right, so then we go through here. Um, again, it kind of comes up with uh, with all this different stuff and and everything. Um, you know, so notice you don't really have a huge amount of choices. You do want to pick the default VPC, okay? And this is one of the things that I that I couldn't show you under the when I when I'm under North uh, Virginia because my account's so old. Um, but basically, just pick the default uh, VPC, pick uh, the defaults. You definitely want it publicly accessible. Um, you don't really care about the availability zone. Um, security groups. Okay, so we could do a couple. I'm actually just going to leave it on create new security group, and I'll kind of show you what that means in a minute. Um, then we come down here. So database name, just like uh, just like before uh, in uh, in MariaDB um, from DBver, we could give the uh, the database itself a name. So I'll just call this. Um, let's call it Cloud DB, right? The database port. Notice you can specify that. We are going to be sort of paying attention to that. Um, notice again, we don't really have uh, many options here. Um, in terms of enable encryption, you don't really need to do that. Okay, so if yours if your option does allow you to select that, you can just turn it off. For our purposes, again here, because we're not going to have these things running that long, we don't really need to uh, need to create backups of this and all. Okay, um, and again, this kind of saves you a little money too. Um, and also, I'm not even going to have it uh, have it do sort of upgrades of the uh, of the software for this. We're not going to have this thing running that long. Okay, so having done all that, I'm just going to go ahead and click uh, click the launch DB instance. And so this will take us there we go right so it kind of comes through all this uh, then what i'm going to do is just going to click on view your db instances okay so once i do this um then we'll see you know it's it's trying to start up uh start up my particular instance um but uh it says endpoint not available yet okay so we need for that to ultimately be ready um in the meantime though we can talk a little bit more about uh, about connections and, and how that's going to work eventually it'll show you an endpoint that is a that that essentially is a a valid um internet address right and you can just take that and uh, and put it in um that's the, that will be the uh the server that we're going to use to connect to from dbeaver um, but what I want to talk about is security, okay? So using just the basic setup like we have here, what happens is uh, is that the the username is actually sent in the clear. The password is kind of encrypted. It looks like it's hashed. Um, but then after that, you're in, in terms of your connection, everything is uh, is technically sent in um in clear text that is anybody kind of sniffing on the wire sees the contents of your database the contents of your queries all these different kinds of things um 
So there is actually a better way of dealing with this, and that's to uh, that's to turn on SSL. Okay, so um, I do have the uh, I have the information here, um, and again, if you're watching, if you found us on the internet, I'll uh, I'll have this in the show notes. But the the main page that we need to go to for dBeaver, um, if you actually scroll up, they kind of talk about some other. Uh, they talk about a few actually. Maybe it is. Maybe it's not another. Anyways, doesn't matter. Um, yeah, here's the intermediate se- sequences. So for dBeaver, what you actually have to do is you have to use the intermediate certificates. Okay, that's why I have this uh, this URL uh, linking here, right? And what you have to do then is pick the certificate for the particular uh, for the particular region that you're using. Okay, so. Um, in your case, you should be using the North Virginia um, region, and so that's the one you're going to download, right? So you'll see it'll throw that into uh, into downloads, right? If I come over to downloads here, um, I actually have two, right? Notice uh, there's the one that I just downloaded, at the the correct one that is uh, that is North Virginia, and here's the one uh, that uh, that I'm actually going to use because I'm connected uh, someplace else, and I explained that before. Um, anyways, let's go back over. Now that we have that certificate, and uh, we can take a look. Yeah, it still says it's creating. You know, th- this thing starting up does take a little bit of time. Okay, so now um, my instance has started up, right? Uh, I can see the uh, the name here. Notice it has tacked onto it the colon 3306 to, uh, to indicate the port. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to grab that name, everything up to, oops, everything up to the colon. Sometimes it's actually just easy. I'll just grab the whole thing. Uh, that'll delete out what I need. Okay, so we have that. I'm going to go over into dBeaver, and I'm going to run dBeaver. Okay, and here I'm just going to say create a new connection. And since we created a Maria database, that's the one we're going to select. Um, then, in terms of host, okay, so instead of uh, instead of local host, we don't want that anymore. We want uh, basically that particular URL that was our endpoint without the colon 306. Okay, so again, you take whatever your endpoint IP address is, that's, uh, that's what you're going to want this to connect to. All right. So we do that. Uh, then, if you want, you can actually put the database name in, or like we've seen before with with dBeaver, you don't have to put the uh, the database name in. Um, that will just uh, that will just ensure that it uh, that it uses that particular database off the bat. Then enter in um, your username and password. Right, and I'm going to go ahead and test that to see. Right? And that's basically what you should see. It should, in fact, test. Okay, Now, doing that, as I said, with just these settings, um, technically everything being sent between your computer and the destination um, is in the open. So if you want to turn on security, essentially you're just going to go to Next, um, and then we're going to go to the SSL option right here. Okay, And we'll turn on Use SSL. Okay, and under CA certificate, we're going to go and select uh, that particular one. As I said, for North Virginia, this is the, that's the name of it. I need to use this one. Um, so you're going to select the appropriate one. Uh, make sure you can put in uh, require SSL. Um, leave the other stuff blank. And uh, now I'm just going to finish this up. So I'll just go through here, click finish. Um, and when I spin this open right here, I should see a connection to uh, to the online database, right? And so there, if I take a look, yeah, there's CloudDB, so there's the actual database itself. So one other thing that I want to show you with this um, is um, has to deal with that security, okay? So that whole thing about security that I was talking about, um, you know, we have it set up so that when dBeaver makes the connection, um, dBeaver is going to use uh, SSL. But if we want to be, um, if we really want to force that anybody connecting to our database server has to use SSL, um, then we actually need to do this. Okay, so let me just show you this. Um, Again, I'm just going to come over here and I'll right click and let me go ahead and um, create a SQL editor. Right, there it is. Okay, then we're going to take this command. um, And again, if you found us on the internet, just check the show notes below. I'm going to copy this whole thing. And I'm going to paste this in. Make sure to uh, add the semicolon. Now, the one thing is, um, you need to change uh, Doctor Ventura to uh, to whatever username you uh, use. So in my case, I happen to use uh, I happen to use Phil in this example. And so now um, I should be able to go ahead and run this like so. 
Okay, and notice it in fact worked. Uh, we didn't get any errors, etc. But that now means that um, that from now on, whenever I try to uh, to log in, I have to have SSL turned on. Okay, um, let's take a look at one other thing here with regard to security so you'll notice that uh, when i first created this i uh, i had this in a uh, in a particular subnet group i'm sorry uh, there there was uh there was an option for creating a um creating a security group for all of this in fact actually i should be able to uh, let's see there we go and is it listed here has everything else listed it seems except for um sub no those are subnet yeah there's a security group Okay, so here's my security group, and what is what the security group is in Amazon? It's kind of like a firewall. Okay, so basically, uh, you specify what ports are allowed to sort of come through and what aren't, and so on and so forth. Right. So I can actually take a look at this, and uh, if I go to the inbound rules, you'll notice um, the the one that it creates when when we're setting up a um, an RDS or um, is uh, is basically notice it's listing on 336 notice this source okay so that source basically is my IP address and in the video of course I will have uh, I will have blurred that out um, and again same thing here so but the point is you know we could actually set it to something like this to anywhere um, and in that case basically anybody can connect in from any particular location generally um, using something like setting it to your own IP address is even better um, but the only thing you do have to worry about is you know sometimes for instance if you're at home the IP address you're gonna it's gonna use is basically gonna be the IP address of your router and on some internet providers that will change from time to time or if you uh, if you set this as your IP address when you're at school when you're on campus um, again then when you come home Home, you're going to have a different IP address so you are going to have to come into here um, if you had a server that's still running um, and uh, and deal with that right so for instance uh, click uh, my IP and so forth okay so that's uh, that's part of the stuff about that then of course you'd click save and all that um, the other thing that uh, that I want to show you is you know once you're done with your database I mean generally the the the, the Amazon intends this service to be used for sort of typically probably long-running databases and so forth. Um, but in our case, I mean, we're basically going to spin up a database. We might do some, some manipulations of it and all that, um, and then just get rid of it. Okay, and so the way you get rid of it, that is, if I close the browser, the database is still up there, it's still running. Okay, I have to actually come here, here and um, and explicitly get rid of it, right? And so the way I'm going to do that is I just make sure that, uh, that the database instance that I'm interested in is selected. And then I'm going to go to Instance Actions, and, oops, and then I'll just say Delete. Okay, and so when I do that, um, notice it says, do I want to kind of create a, a final snapshot, a sort of final backup? Um, again, I don't care to save anything that I just did. Um, and so then we go ahead and click delete. And so this will shut down the server. It will delete the various resources and so forth. If you're creating lots of databases um, and leaving them running constantly, um, you can then get into the issue of, uh, of running through your uh, your $100 credit that you get from, uh, from AWS Educate. So so generally, unless you really need to, you're going to want to shut the database down. Okay, so hopefully that helps. If you have questions, uh, shoot them down. Uh, and you're in my class, hit us up on Piazza. Otherwise, um, from the internet, just shoot them down in the comments.